Shalom, my name is Rudy Rockman and I'm here at the 2019 APAC Policy Conference. Now, though most people come to APAC to listen to the interesting conversations inside, I'm here also to try and speak to the protesters outside to see what they think. Now, we know there are many different types of groups. Let's see what they have to say. First of all, I hope you guys all know, fuck Hezbollah, screw Hamas, screw Saudi Arabia, screw Iran. Most Palestinians are actually like me. However, people like you need to be the ones that replace that power because you truly represent the Palestinians. She's blaming that in Israel like said, uh, we go by the fact that we want to kill Palestinians. That, the idea, that's what they teach. What I, what I said was not worth from where no, like that. Let, 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 her, let her speak, let her speak. Essentially, the IDF is a military force. You guys are electing a government that is to protect the Israelis. The world. You want to? Like protect them from what? Like terror attacks, correct? Protect them from any sort of insecurity. Any sort of insecurity. So you were on ground in Israel. How do you treat Palestinian children? So we need to treat any other child. Where did you work? I was in the territory. It was uh, leaked from my okay. Have you ever raided Palestinian homes? What do you say about the raiding of Palestinian homes? I say that there's a context there. If there's a particular individual, Palestinian, not defining all the people, that goes and kills an individual and goes and hides in one of those homes, you can understand how a security force has to go and try and find that person. a lot person. of the times, those houses end up being um, wrongly targeted. Then, it, again, consequences of a war. But it's, so it's just like collateral? No, damage? it's not. It, sh it's, it should be condemned. But we have to understand that there's a context of a conflict happening. Right? And that conflict should end. And I'm telling you that as an Israeli, and I think you agree with that as a Palestinian. But we cannot just find the instances of suffering and take the whole context out of it. And then just like say, oh, well, this is happening. It is happening and it has to stop. But there's a reason it's happening. You have one extremist group that is not willing to let go of power because it, 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 they thrive off of that power and, and have costed the lives of hundreds of thousands of innocent Gazans. And you have an, another group that says that, hey, I'm democratic, but I'm still willing to bomb the living hell out of innocent Gazans. Well, I condemn any murder of Palestinians. And I do too. Okay? I, and I, for Israel right. as well. However, it's the context of that bombing. I'm not justifying it, but. Israel does everything in its power to prevent casualties, right? For example, okay, when they're about to go and bomb, and it's not the entire city, it's a certain area where there were rockets specifically shot from there. And before they do that, they call the phones of everyone in the building, but in the moment Arabic, in five minutes, 20 minutes, we're going to come and bomb. The second thing they do is they have leaflets that are that a drone comes and sends out leaflets written in Arabic. If anyone didn't get a call, at least they see. And the third and final thing that they do, they have something called a knocker bomb, where they come and they have a little explosion that just makes noise to let everyone in the building know to leave. However, Hamas forces individuals to stay there so that when the actual bomb comes in order to destroy weapons that are being shot into Israel, that individuals are dead. So I'll condemn the murder of those people. However, we can't take like a conflict and blame all the consequences of the conflict on one side, right? So it's not because Israel is defending itself that Palestinians are killing. It's because like Hamas is forcing people to be there and shooting rockets out of those buildings because they also are suffering in the area and they have horrible lives. Right? And they don't have access to movement and they can't go outside. They can't have importation without being stopped by Israel. These are There's the siege on Gaza. These have to stop. However, how do they stop? Okay, they have to stop by us not seeing each other as the enemy of the other story. And that's not the conversation happening in the power of the Palestinian society. I would agree with you that the vast majority of the people believe this way, but the people aren't in power. And so I think that we can take out Hamas, we can take out the PA, we can take out all these like factions that you see with. However, people like you need to be the ones that replace that power because you truly represent the Palestinians. Where does the blame go? Like, where do you, that's the thing. You're right, we shouldn't be sitting around. Are we focused more on blame or more on, 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 on change? You're right, but how do you, how do you change? How do I change? Again. You have to start at the root, correct? What's the root? And the root stems from 1948. From the creation of Israel? From the exile of Right, but that, but that happened because of war. It, it's not that Israel created a country and said the next day you know what Palestinians do. Right? Israel established this country which I think should have happened differently, but understanding the circumstances at the time, I understand why it was done that way. And there was a war waged by all the surrounding Arab countries. And in the war there were people that were displaced and so killed. what was it called before Israel to Palestine? Okay, it was called the British Mandate of Palestine. But Palestinians only chose to collectively really but identify themselves with the Palestine. But, but, but UN recognized as Palestine. Okay, so Palestinians today only chose in 1964 to adopt the Palestinian flag and to collectively call themselves all as Palestinians. Before that, they were Arabs living in Palestine. Right? And the, and the term Palestine itself, when was the, the land named Palestine? By who? Huh? The Romans. The Romans. There weren't Arabs yet at that time. 
Like there wasn't Islam yet. They just, and why did they do that after taking it from Judea to Palestine? Because the word Palestine is from the word Kishtim, which is like David and Goliath. Goliath was part of this Kishtim people. And when they destroyed Judea, they decided to name the land by one of their former greatest enemies as an insult. So these inhabitants of that country okay. were it wasn't a country, it was always a region controlled by an empire. But it was recognized, I mean it still is recognized by other countries as, as a country. Today as Israel or British <laughs> Columbia Palestine? It was never a country. It, it, it never, it has never, I mean in, in history textbooks if you look, it's never been called the British Mandate of Palestine. It's literally just called Palestine. But it, it's the British Mandate of Palestine, it's a British coin, it's British currency, it's British control, British soldiers. You could say the same British thing about Israel. You could say the exact same British. thing about Israel. No, in Israel. Because it was it, granted by the Brits. No, the British left. It's the United Nations that decided to do the two-state partition plan, which again, I disagree with. But the Brits just, they did grant. Like, they, they, they literally... Are you talking about the Balfour Declaration? Talking about the British mandate. Okay, the British mandate. They pulled out and left. And they also gave what was British mandate of Palestine, three-fifths of that being Jordan, right? They gave that to Hashemai Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of things being done by the British and France in the sex Equal Agreement and dividing lands by, like, what is, like, beneficial to themselves. Correct, but Palestine is still recognized as a country. No, never. I mean, the UN-wise, yeah, it is. Okay, no. so they, okay, so now you're talking about the West Bank, but, but we're talking about 48. Before 48, Palestine was never a country, right? It was just a region controlled by an empire. It was the British, before the British was the Ottomans, before the Ottomans was the Byzantines, before Byzantines was the Romans. What came before that? Judea. In the context of Judea, can I ask, I mean, you brought up um, David and Goliath. Yeah. In the modern context, which country would be David and which Goliath? So David in that story was like a boy, but at some point David grows and becomes a very powerful king, but he's still the same person. So the fact that Israel has been powerful today... David is literally a little boy throwing a rock at an occupying invading force. Yes, but... Could it, you not but, say that that, no, that analog No, the Jews are not an occupying invading force. The Jews are indigenous to the land. Dig in the ground and find me Jewish artifacts, right? You also find a host of other ethnic groups, some of whom were wiped out. Like which, which group? I mean, does the Bible, does the Torah not detail groups that were there before? Which groups? Like the, the Canaanites you're talking about? Yeah. Which also. one don't exist and also had stemmed from Africa. Okay. I, I don't know about them specifically. Okay. We have always loved our Jewish brothers and sisters. The fight is not against Judaism, and you know that. Okay. I know you know that. I know you ever, it, it, or it, it I want you guys to, to know that. Depends I don't see that. all Palestinians as it's their fight against Judaism. I agree with you on that. Okay. But there are many individuals, especially I would say leaders, that are using Palestinian struggles as a way to attack Israel, right? And they don't care about Palestinians dying in Syria. We've got the dictator in Syria, whose name is Bashar al-Assad. The dictator in Ramallah. And you are talking about Omar Yeah. Israel and we have, the dicta we have dictators from all over who have done the exact same thing and used the Palestinian struggle as a way to make themselves somewhat seem deemable for support from other people. First of all, I hope you guys all know Fuck Hezbollah. Thank you. From my side. Okay? Because not only, like, they have killed innocent Syrians in Syria. Right? And that is why I say that. Screw Hamas. Screw Saudi Arabia. Screw Iran. That is, like, five things I've just named right now that I'm sure all of us agree on. And I'm sure you guys did not expect me to agree on those things. Right? From where? Why? Because most Palestinians are actually like me. Most Palestinians actually believe this way. I think most yeah. things we actually agree. I, I, I'm sure we do. Our Jewish brothers and sisters have lived here forever. But when the illegal settlement happened, the Dome of the Rock is not a mosque. The mosque is across the Temple Mount. Literally, do you believe Jews have a right to live in the Temple Mount? I believe the Jews have a right to exist. Okay, so if there's a settlement that like takes Palestinians out of their home and builds it, I'll condemn it with you. However, you can agree that if there's no one living there, that you should also be allowed to live there. So the idea of a Jewish civilization, aka settlement there, yeah, but that's there, not the case. So happened. It, it, okay. Like it's bulldozed hundreds of homes, including my family's home in okay, Nablus. So certain homes are bulldozed as like a policy, which I'm not defending the policy, but a policy as if there's someone who's a terrorist, their homes get bulldozed, right? So, so okay, I, I'm not saying I agree with that policy, but we have to also give the greater context, right? Because when we like talk about injustice, but we take away the context, it's kind of like using injustice as political ammunition, right? And and it's not about who started first. We can point fingers here, we can point fingers there. I, I personally think like the British made us think that it's one or the other, right? Divided the land that way, and then and then made us think that like it's either one state or two state, and it's a zero sum game, right? But what you represent.
percent is actually I agree with you. The vast majority of Palestinians that actually want to find a way to like have a future. I have a question for you. How do you empower your own community to be able to speak about these ideas and then have influence amongst their community? Well, I'd love to know. I'd love to know how and like and what's your vision of like growing that influence? Where people come together, sit and talk about how to coexist. Not only just that from our side, but to also organize to have interfaith together and come together and stand for the same cause, which is human rights for everyone. But the problem with that is when you have people come up to you and say, well, you know what, Hamas is firing rockets. We need to stop. So Israel stops bombing. Both sides need to stop. Huh? Both sides need to stop. Both sides need to stop, right? But I'm asking you, how do you see like a future where individuals like yourself, which want to come forward and don't see all Israelis as their enemy, how do people like you become empowered? When people like you, and people like you guys, want to listen, that's where it starts. It does. You guys giving us attention is giving us power to be heard. But why do you think everyone here is like of the same like generation, same age? Because we're of a younger generation that actually, when we do come into positions of power, whether it's being a doctor, whether it's being a politician, whether it's being someone in the media, we are going to be a generation that is able to change things. However, conversations have to start happening because what I see happening in a lot of these protests is always end Israel. End Israel, end Israel. I feel like if you Israel. guys listen closely though, a lot of the things we were saying, a lot of people we're were like about... supporting Hamas. Which you, here? Yes, here. A lot of people were saying like we support Hamas and all the Jews need to be killed and saying some crazy well, stuff. See, that doesn't represent all. I honestly have not heard a single person say that because A, you can literally be in prison to life if you say you support Hamas publicly. I mean like if you if that's what you heard then that's crazy because I've never heard that. They're literally advised even if they You don't do. think there are people here that support Hamas? I'm hoping not. But honestly, I'm, uh, personally, I don't associate myself with no, anyone. No, I, I know. I know that your ideas, you're responsible for your own. I ideas. still don't. I still don't like even cooperate or work or anything. I actually don't work with anyone. I'm an independent activist who goes to every kind of event, right? And there's a lot of things that I condemn in the situation there. For example, I don't believe there should be a wall dividing our people. I think a lot of Palestinians have limited access to resources, limited access to opportunity, no access to movement. A lot of things that need to change. However, if we take the suffering of Palestinians and blame it all on Israel, we're actually not helping trying to change that situation. We need to realize neither population is just going to disappear. And it's not a zero-sum game. I don't think that the point, that's the problem is when you guys believe that some people want you to disappear. But so many times we hear like, end of Israel, destroy Israel. Which is why I was asking you the question is like, people like you, are not repre are, don't hold like any sort of representation, right? They don't have a voice. They don't. They aren't in government. They aren't in like positions of like valued thinkers. They're not on media. You, like I hope you make YouTube channels. I hope you start conversations. I hope one day maybe you, me and you could sit down and actually have a conversation again of what are those injustices, what are those aspirations, and what does that mean in Israel that we can create that fulfills both of those things. Because that's the conversation we need to have. So if we always see it as if you're pro-Israel, it means you must be anti-Palestinian. If you're pro-Palestinian, you must be anti-Israel. That just is fuel for the conflict. What are you guys funding for lobbying? So I'm not lobbying, okay? And I don't. I disagree with a lot of things that APAC says. For example, I'll give you an example. The U.S. foreign aid to Israel, I'm completely against. Okay? I'll tell you why I'm completely against it. Because it's not actually money giving to Israel. It's be us becoming dependent on U.S. weapons because it's credit into getting U.S. weapons, meaning every single weapon in Israel is U.S. produced. So the day that the U.S. either is no longer there or turns against Israel, we have no way of becoming dependent on ourselves and being able to like defend ourselves. So it allows America to have control. And I don't want to be controlled by any society. I think the people on the ground living in Israel should have a control of their own region. The U.S. can be like friends with Israel in terms of like we can trade, we can have open borders, we can have travel, we can have visas. But I don't think the U.S. has a right to control anything from that region. I think the people living there should have control. And that's why I'm particularly against the U.S. foreign aid, because it's not just money. The root problem comes too. from power, we believe and it comes it from God. confusing God. religion with politics. It's what Christians the Jewish faith has, is, is, the, is, what, is the closest Islam faith to Islam. But you know Judaism, I personally don't consider as a religion. Right? And that's and, understandable. And, and I'll explain to you why, why I have that position. That, that's 100% so, understandable. But when we say a Jewish state, we're not talking about a religious state, we're talking about like a country like Tibet. Right? Where it's a people, right, that have a culture, have a history, have a connection to their land, have an identity, that come back to their land. When we say that we want a Jewish You're afraid state, that I might change like your mind? Why are you afraid state. It's like a, a state for the Jewish people that your have a right to access undone? to their land, and those that live there as well have a right to full equal citizenship in living in that land. 
So when we say Jewish state, it's not this is the Jewish religion that has to be imposed on everyone else. It's the same thing as like Tibetans coming back to Tibet and reviving their civilization and realizing during the time that they were displaced from that civilization, other individuals moved in, right, like Chinese people, and saying they have a right to live there, but they're living now in Tibet. So you believe that it has nothing to do with religion? No, I don't think Judaism is a religion. I think there are religious aspects within Judaism. We actually translate like religion, for example. It's the belief system in a God, deity, book, or prophet. So it's an ideology that just crosses over borders and over people. So what would you, sorry, I'm so sorry. What would you, what would you consider? Judaism? Like what would you consider the faith of the Jewish people? No, I would say that Judaism is a portable suitcase of an identity of a people from Judea that when they were displaced from that land, they passed down that identity, that portable suitcase with their culture, their relationship with a higher power, their values, value system, their language, passing on generation to generation with the idea of one day coming back home. If you're talking about semantics, most people understand Judaism as, as being personal. Right, but if we actually break down religions and break down Judaism, it's actually not the same at all. Like for example, the example I gave you earlier, Native Americans are, are a collective of, of people, of nations, right? Right, Native Americans. They're, they're a collective of peoples. Right, they're not one nation, but they have many nations within them. Right? Like they wouldn't even, a lot of them wouldn't even identify as they are their tribe. They are like their tribe. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. They're a collective of many different nations. So, one, let's take one individual nation. Right? They have spirits, and they have belief systems, and they have deities. But they're not a religion just because they have belief systems. They're a people with a connection to a land, with a history, with a culture, with a value system, with a language, with all that comes included. So what I'm saying is that Judaism is the collective of that of a people that came from Judea. And that we're able to pass that down throughout the diaspora that they came in. So it's not about someone can become a Jew. So so you know someone can actually become Native American. If you go through a process within Native American culture in certain tribes, you could actually go through years of a process to adopt the identity and be recognized as a Native American. I don't know how accepted that is in Jewish society. Like for, for the way that Jews see converts, first of all, it's years of conversion. It's not like I accept Jesus, I'm a Christian. I accept Muhammad, I'm a Muslim. Right? I accept Buddha, I'm a Buddhist. For Judaism, it's years of adopting an identity, adopting a culture, a value system, adopting the mission statement, adopting the suffering that comes with it, and then becoming part of a people. And so that's the way that we have our own civilization, that people can become Jews. And the way Jew in Judaism, the way that we see it is that a convert is a Jewish soul born in a non-Jewish body that found its way back to its people. My kids will be born in the region, which is why this is like, not just, absolutely. Because I want my children to be able to live in a region that is not just better than the region that we have today, but that is able to live equally and freely with all types of people. So what do you think, what do you think, what do you think is the solution? So I don't have like, let me ask you, yeah, like, what do you, what do you think, what? I don't think any people in power right now, whether the Israeli government, nor the PA, nor Hamas, has intention of changing the status quo. Okay? And if we do want to change the status quo, which is not talking about peace, but talking about justice, we have to actually have conversations of what needs to change on the ground, which is the injustices for both, and figure out how to fulfill the aspirations for both. And I actually think that they don't contradict. I mean, tell me about more local power, and tell me about access to resource, and access to movement. That doesn't contradict with Jews wanting to have their Jewish state. That doesn't contradict the Jews wanting to be safe. Like these, the top ten things that the Jews want, the top ten things that Palestinians want, actually don't contradict. The only reason they contradict is because the way that they're sold as is that they want your destruction and they want your destruction, and you can't have both. So I don't have an answer for you as to like what we need to do to find a solution, but I have an answer to you that I think it's our responsibility as you, your Palestinian as you being Palestinian and me being Israeli, for us to take the responsibility within our own sides to have those conversations with our own people of finding a way to come together and to understand the other side and to humanize the other side. Shalom everyone, my name is Rudy Rachman and I'm a Jewish and Israel rights activist. My work focuses on empowering the next generation of Jews and allies to be ideologically strong in order for us to write the next chapter of history. If you like my work and appreciate what I do, you can support us on patreon.com and link will be below. I'm Rudy Rockman and you're watching JTV. To stay up to date with JTV content, click subscribe here if you're on YouTube and hit the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button and under following, click see first. If you enjoy watching JTV content and want to help us continue to grow, please consider making a donation to us by clicking here.